Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Great. Yes, partied hard last night. Yeah. So there is coffee. They're selling coffee in the booth. Yesterday, this was not the case, but they will do today. So uh, enjoy that. So I will be your host for the, this stage today, and I will announce the speakers. So the first one, next one up, is Jim Crawford from all the way from California, and he will talk about this ARG thing that he did. And he's over there, and he will tell you all about it. So enjoy, have fun. If I put my head here, is the microphone close enough? Is that good? Okay, so um, I'm Jim Crawford. I'm a sandwich imagineer at Twin Beard. Uh, this is a talk about the uh, ARG that I designed to promote Frog Fractions to uh, on basically no budget and with no plan. So if you're here to hear that story, then welcome. If you're here because you also want to run an ARG with uh, no budget and no plan, then good luck. So to set the stage, Frog Fractions was a game that um, rather than uh, intended to be fun, was supposed to be a game that is funny and surprising and mysterious. And this is a really weird design decision. Uh, for 30, 40 years, game designers have been focused almost exclusively on making the most fun games possible. So if they're faced with any given design decision, they are going to uh, make the design decision that makes the game more fun. And um, so this is a really weird design choice. And it was, I think, uh, the fact that it was more mysterious and more surprising was, than, than, any, than most games is actually what made this a popular game. And so I wanted to bring that ethos to GDC. So I had, I had shipped Frog Fractions at the end of 2012. In March of 2013, I went to GDC for the first time. And I wanted to uh, make Meeting Me be as weird as Frog Fractions was. So I put this base64 encoded string on my business card, and that led to a series of puzzles on the web. Uh, and nobody really noticed. Uh, I gave the card to people, and some people noticed the weird thing, and I, I asked about it, and I told them it was a misprint. Uh, and they believed me, and they didn't investigate further, because everybody at GDC is really busy, and they don't have time for my bullshit. Um, so all these puzzles were up on the web when I did the Kickstarter. They were just there. Um, so I built, this is a Kickstarter campaign that I built that was the start of the Frog Fractions 2 experience, the, just the, this weird thing existing out in the world. It's part of the whole ethos. Um, and I uh, put together this pitch video that is sort of a four minute surrealistic short film more than an actual pitch video. Uh, and we, I probably had like 15 people helping me make this thing, including one like a, a, a an all-day shoot where I had five actors and like three people making costumes. It was a really fun day. Uh, and this video had uh, a bunch of weird secrets in it. So for example, here on the left, there's this glitch face giving you a password. Uh, on the right, uh, these are the uh, Ambrogi brothers who made Jamestown. Weird uh, secret there. Um, they are giving you a warning from the, the past. Um, and on the background there, there is a URL. You can't see it here, and you couldn't even see it in the Kickstarter video because it was just too low res. I had to upload it to YouTube. Um, but in the background there, on the blackboard, there is a URL leading to the, uh, the puzzles I created a year earlier. And in this video also, you are, you're constantly, it's constantly interrupted with messages from time travelers warning people about the decay, which is uh, a weird phenomenon that is slowly ending the universe. So uh, the puzzles led to uh, this mini game that I created where you shave Barack Obama's face. Uh, and every day you do this. And afterwards, you are, you're presented with an uh, in-game Twitter feed in which public political figures will critique your beard. Uh, after you do this for a few days, you get a message from one of these people uh, talking about a real-life meeting where you, um, the plan was that People would come to this location on Berkeley campus, and they would meet me there, and I would say, hi, you know, this is, I'm Jim, welcome to the end of the ARG. Uh, this is what you've been doing it all for, is to meet me. This is, unfortunately, the bad end.
last night in my bedroom. Um, uh, it ended up being a lot more complicated than that because people really wanted to help. People got really excited about this. Uh, I had something like 10 people, actors, uh, costume designers, who we put together this improvised play where I did actually, I showed up at the, at the meeting and we, it started like I was planning where I just said hello and talked to people for a while and then I was kidnapped by time travelers. Uh, and you can see videos of this on YouTube if you're interested. Um, and I dropped, because I just can't let it go, I dropped a bag of floppy disks on the ground um, <laughs> and there were more puzzles on the disks. And these puzzles were, um, it, it was hidden inside an uh, ARJ file. And ARJ is an archive format from my youth. Uh, I don't know if anybody here is old enough to remember it, but at the time it was um, contemporary with PKZIP, with the ZIP format. And so like ARJ is better at some things and ZIP is better than other, at others. And you make a decision which one you want to use. And there were evangelists on both sides. And eventually ZIP took over the world. Uh, but I encrypted these images in an ARJ, ARJ file. And it was using the password that Glitchface was saying. So I assumed that um, people would just immediately say, well, here's this password we haven't used yet in the ARG. Let's try that. Uh, but nobody got it. Uh, nobody figured out that that was the password to decrypt the files. So the way people ended up solving it was a mathematician actually went in and read the ARG source code and broke the encryption, like figured out how to break the encryption. Uh, and, and so this is a talk about um, reacting to what players are doing in the same way you might do if you're running a tabletop RPG. You see what the players are doing and you change your game design to compensate. And this is actually an example of me deliberately not doing that. And part of the reason for that was that I was busy making a video game. I don't have time to make more ARG puzzles. But the better reason is that um, it makes it feel more real when players, uh, these players just like not knowing what to do for six months uh, and the designer not helping them out, not giving more clues, that made it feel like they were really on their own and they really needed to figure everything out themselves. It felt like a real mystery. Uh, and it kept feeling like that, I hope, even after I started actually guiding their every move later. Uh, so one of the reasons I was busy is I was also running this second ARG, um, which nobody knew was mine until much later. Uh, and what happened there was I would, I would approach indie developers and I would say, would you like me to put a small part of Frog Fractions 2 in your game? Uh, there ended up being something like 30 people, 30, 30 indie games that had my, some of these in it. Um, and if they said yes, and almost everybody did, uh, we, I would work with them to figure out where do I put this image in your game, hide it somewhere, have a puzzle associated with it uh, that was very difficult so the community would have to solve it together. And uh, when they solved it, they'd be presented with a map piece. And the map pieces fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, and what I told them was that when this map piece is all together, it will lead to Frog Fractions 2. I didn't know what that meant at the time. Um, so I, I designed this map that it was, had an interesting shape to it and had interesting notation on it. And I just figured, well, someday I'll come up with a puzzle to which this map is the solution. Um, so why were all these people, like 30, 30 indie devs and also the people that were working with them, about 30 people helping me with the pitch, with the Kickstarter pitch and the ARG stuff, why were they all willing to help for free? And the answer is social capital, which is basically, basically is a fancy way of saying people like you. Uh, so I didn't make any money from Frog Fractions. In fact, it cost me a lot of money because I was paying hosting fees. Um, but uh, it made people like me a lot. It made me a lot of friends and it made a lot of people want to work with me. Uh, and so I uh, capitalized on this a lot for the Kickstarter and for the development of Frog Fractions too. Um, and this is something that you can't really do if you have money. So if you actually have a budget, you can't save money by doing this because people are going to wonder why you're not paying them. Um, uh, but you don't need to have shipped Frog Fractions to do this. When I was making Frog Fractions, um, even before I shipped it, if I showed it to a friend, very often this friend would want to help, but just because it was a cool thing. And so um, you can actually use this as a barometer. If you are making a project and you show it to somebody and they don't want to help you, then maybe it's not cool enough. Maybe you need to go back to the drawing board. So it was, it was months before anybody found the sigils, any of the sigils, and it was over a year before people saw more than one and realized that they were connected. 
but once the, once the floodgates were open, people started looking for sigils in all these different games, trying to put the pieces together. Um, so a few months after they solved the six-month puzzle, I, was, they were, I, I had just not made any more content for the ARG because I'm busy making this video game. I'm busy with this other ARG. Um, so I ended up pulling in a friend who um, had expressed interest to me. He wanted to make an ARG that was just works on Kingdom of Loathing, so an ARG just for the one person. And I convinced him, take these puzzle ideas and put them in my, my ARG instead um, with a bigger audience. And um, he ended up running most of the ARG for over a year, for uh, almost up until the, right, right, right until the end. Uh, so we were reading uh, the Unfiction Forum uh, where there were two threads on one for each ARG. And this is a, a, a forum that is for ARG solvers. So like if you want to read about um, various ARGs, historical ARGs, this is actually a great place to go to see what the community was doing over time. Uh, and so we were reading this to get a sense of like what's going on, what are they trying to do. And um, often they would have ideas for puzzles that were better than ours. Uh, so we would put out some, so like a weird piece of information and they would latch on to incidental details and think that that must be a clue. Um, and very often this is just a better idea than ours. So we would take that idea and say, okay, that's, that's canon now. That's actually the solution. And we would design going forward with that in mind. Uh, and the advantage of this is twofold. One, one, one advantage is that you can use the entire community as your brainstorming team. And the other advantage is the people who put forth those theories, they get to feel really smart for getting the puzzle early. For example, at the time I was recording a, uh, a podcast called Train Hot Dog, uh, which is sort of a joke, but sort of not, where I was recording a podcast on uh, the Bay Area train system. Uh, so I'm Googling various topics and talking about them into my phone. And most of the time, you can't hear me talking because you're hearing train noises. Um, this had an audience of about 80 people, uh, including many of the ARG people. Um, and they assumed right off the bat, I hadn't even thought of this, that there were going to be ARG clues in this podcast. And so, for example, so, so I started putting them in there. For example, here is this slow scan TV image of Morgan Freeman wishing you uh, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, Eventually, the uh, ARG players moved over to Discord, which is a real-time chat. And obviously, they, they wanted to do this because it more, fosters more of a sense of community. It's um, more uh, efficient to communicate in real time. You can much more easily make friends in a chat room than on a forum, so that's understandable. It was really irritating for us, though, because um, instead of being able to read a few minutes a day to, on, the, on the forum to catch up with what everybody's doing, we had to be logged into the Discord, which I believe doesn't have logs. Uh, and, and also, the, 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 there's, it's just so much more voluminous. There's so much more of people talking that you have to read to catch up with what's going on. Um, and this is also something that uh, it, didn't, it wasn't just annoying for us, uh, because so Justin McElroy wrote an article on Polygon about halfway through the ARG that just laid out a very thorough, detailed, and accurate um, a description of what had happened so far in the ARG. And uh, his source for this was the Unfiction forum thread. And he just had to read through it once, and then he had all the information he needed to write this article uh, once he had distilled it into the coolest parts. And you couldn't do that with, uh, the disc with everybody talking in Discord. You had to uh, either be in there reading it the whole time, or you had to interview people. You have to do actual reporting. Um, and so the people who uh, wrote the article uh, towards the end of the ARG, they had to really work at it. So we, uh, at this point, the, the players had pretty much put together the whole map, and we decided it was time to connect the two, air, to the two ARGs together. So we put a clue in Firewatch, which was just this word, this little like, letter cloud, the nasty like letters randomly spaced. And this was also uh, one of the ARG community members' ideas, was that the circles in the map would be overlaid over text or an image, and it would reveal key locations or words uh, in the text. And so I used that idea, uh, and it, this spells out a password that you use in the, um, and again, nobody knew this at the time that these two args were connected, but you had to use this password uh, from the sigil arg in the Frog Fractions 2 arg. And once you uh, did that, 
you would be given this video of Ben McGraw and I eating soup and talking about soup. Um, and this was explicitly designed uh, to be a disappointing ending to two years of detective work and puzzle solving. Like my idea was that people would be annoyed by this and then I would subvert that by having a cool ending later and the cool ending would be cooler because you were already in the mode of being disappointed. It would just feel even better. Uh, but that was a really risky move because I didn't know what the good ending would be. Um, I had to figure that out. So I, needed, I knew I needed to, to pay off this, this whole thing, two and a half, three years of detective work. Um, the obvious idea is, well, yes, of course it should lead to the game. And everybody, all the players assumed that would be the case, that it would eventually lead to Frog Fractions too. But I had promised in the Kickstarter that I would never reveal the location of the game, the identity of the game. And so I needed to figure out how was I going to make this a satisfying ending while not actually giving people the game's identity. Uh, and at this time, uh, Justin had the idea of he would put together a box, and the box would have a bunch of junk in it, and we could give the box, and we could hand it off at, I think, Indiecade, and uh, the person who received it would do an unboxing video where he shows, like, it's all this weird stuff in this box, what could it mean? And then the community members could all puzzle it out, like, what, what do these clues mean? Um, and the box ended up going through me. I met up with the person it was intended for. We had lunch. And uh, she confided in me that what she really wanted to do, uh, not just make an unboxing video, she wanted to add her own clues to the box and run her own ARG on the side. So running alongside ours. Um, and I agreed to this immediately. That's a, that's a fantastic idea. Um, and because Justin at the time was preparing for finals at college, uh, the, our ARG was pretty much not moving. Nothing was happening in there. So what the, the stuff that Erica did, all those puzzles and all that story that she wrote, uh, ended up being what the community focused on in the last few months of before, ship, before we shipped. Uh, so we ended up working with her to figure out how to pay off the, the ARG. And so the seed of the idea uh, was that was the Amazon dash button, which is basically it's a keychain fob where like, oh, I'm low on Tide detergent, I'll just push this button. And it's a, it's a way to do that that's just slightly easier than going to Amazon and typing in Tide detergent and pushing buy now. And, and you can get these for all sorts of products. Like if you're, if you're out of bounty paper towels, you can push a button. Uh, and you can, and the, the obvious use case for this is if you're out of toilet paper, you can just, you're stuck there on the toilet, you can just push this button, and then in two days, toilet paper will arrive at your door. Uh, and my idea here was that we would make one of these, instead of sending a message to Amazon, it would send it to us, and we would, it would have the Frog Fractions 2 logo on it, and you would push the button and launch the game. Uh, so Frog Fractions 2 eventually became part of spoilers, part of this game, Glitter Mitten Grove. Uh, we launched that mid-December without Frog Fractions 2 in it. So it was just the, glitter, just the fairy city building game. Um, and so the plan was, uh, when the players finished, when they solved the last puzzle and they finished the ARG, we would then patch the game to include Frog Fractions 2. So the payoff for this, the three-year ARG, was that uh, the reward for solving all these puzzles was actually launching the game, and it wouldn't exist until then. So... Uh, we divided the, the, the puzzles into two, fork, two forks, uh, one of which, uh, there was a series of puzzles at the end of which a player gave us his address and we sent him this button. Uh, another series of puzzles, uh, they, the players ended up going to a room escape game in Portland uh, and they got this key. Um, and they didn't know uh, until they got both items that they needed to actually be together. And so when they got, they got these two items, something on like December 20th, and they then had to ship the key to the person who had the box. And so they came together around Christmas. And understandably, the person who had the box didn't want to take time out of his Christmas with his family to, um, to make this button video. So it was actually uh, early morning the day after Christmas when uh, the, the, he uploaded a video of him pushing the button to YouTube. And within minutes, we had patched the game. And this is actually, um, this is how people found the game is that there are databases online. If you go to these, uh, I think SteamDB is one of them, for example, and you can ask the database, 
uh, what games launched between this hour and this hour on this day. And there were games that launched on Christmas that year. It's very sad. Uh, people crunching on their VR game to launch on Christmas Day. Um, and so they were looking for what games patched around this time. And ours was really the only one. And they looked at the store page and, and it, um, it had some weird, like, weird clues on it that might be related to our game. And so someone asked me on Kickstarter, uh, is this Frog Fractions 2? And for the first time in my life, I was able to say yes. Uh, but please keep it quiet. And so um, he relayed this message to the Discord, and it was actually really scary. Like, they, the people who ran the Discord, they, they scrubbed the uh, game's identity from all, from all the channels. They were deleting topics. I think they banned people. Um, and so it, it delayed, like, public knowledge of this game for, for something like half a day. Um, <laughs> Uh, but the next day, it was, it was all over the news, um, and that was very exciting. And my favorite part of this whole thing is that pushing the button to launch the game is actually the bad ending of the ARG. Pushing the button is actually what uh, starts the decay, the, the phenomenon that ends the universe. Um, but we knew that the, the, the peop they wouldn't be able to resist because they wanted to play the game. Uh, so we were able to trust that yeah, of course they're going to push the button. Why, why, would, they, why would they not want to play this game? Um, and so we didn't have a backup plan. And we actually didn't need one. Even if uh, the player who ended up pushing the button had decided, no, I'm going to save the world and not launch Frog Fractions 2, uh, because we could have then come up with a new plan on the fly. And that is the uh, real power of reactive game design, is that you can trust your players even if they're not trustworthy. So I think we have... Six minutes for questions. Uh, before that, uh, I will point out that if you want uh, details on more th all the things that happened in the ARG, you can go to Game Detectives. Just search for Frog Fractions 2 ARG. You can go to Game Detectives uh, wiki, and it's a very thorough breakdown of all the weird shit that we put in, that, put in, that, uh, in those puzzles.